Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's see how can we measure the conductivity of an ionic solution. Typically to measure conductivity of a metal what we do, we use a Wheatstone bridge in that format. Right? You must have studied about the Wheatstone bridge in the physics. So well, we create a pattern something like this. We have four different resistors. right? So and we make sure that there is no current that passes through this uh, point A and B. In that scenario, we say R2 into R3 is equal to R4 into R1. I won't cover the Wheatstone bridge in detail because I know that that has been covered in physics. You can watch that videos on Wheatstone bridge. So that is a way to create to find out the resistance of an unknown resistor, right? Similarly, here also we'll use Wheatstone bridge to find resistance of the ionic solution but again the problem with this ionic solution is ionic solution if you see is a liquid it doesn't have a definite mass right how will you find uh, LNA because I say told that resistance is rho L by A correct so if it doesn't have any uh, definite mass definite size and shape how will you find the resistance right because it doesn't have any uh, definite shape also, as I told that if you pass a current, right, if you pass the current, the, uh, the composition of the solution is changing. If you pass a DC current here, for example, if you pass a DC current, you take a battery, battery has a DC current. If you pass the DC current over a period of time, the composition of the electrolyte changes. If the composition changes, that means the resistance will change because resistance is nothing but resistance to the flow of current and resistance to the flow of current is because of the viscosity of the solution and other property of the solution or other property of the electrolyte if that changes the resistance will change right so one problem is it doesn't have a definite uh, shape the second one is this electrolytes when you use dc current the composition of electrolyte changes and uh, the third one is again uh, linked to the first one when I say that the electrolyte doesn't have a definite shape so that means electrolyte solution we cannot connect to a bridge just like that right because it needs to be something solid since it doesn't have any shape you just can, cannot connect it. So these problems are solved uh, the, the first problem which I have where I don't have a shape a definite shape that is solved by conducting cell. Conducting cell looks like this. This is my conducting cell. So let me use this, write this term conducting cell. So these conducting cell are specially designed and there are various types of designs in the market actually. So they'll have some plates here, right? And it'll have some uh, space to fill the electrolytes. So with this, this distance I'll call as length from distance P to Q will be the L and the cross section of this Q will be the area right because at, at a given point of time if you see this particular volume of uh, electrolyte will be conducting. So using the proper vessel and that vessel is called conducting cell we can solve the problem of definite shape. For the change in composition of uh, electrolyte on passing DC current that is that can be solved by passing AC current instead of DC current. AC current you know is alternating current so uh, it will change its uh, polarity right so that with that the electrolyte will not change its uh, concentration over a period of time. Now if you see this uh, particular conducting cell which is here this is an example of conducting cell it has two platinum electrodes these two are the two platinum electrodes P and S and they are coated with platinum black. See why they are coated with platinum black? First understand what is platinum black. Platinum black is nothing but it's, it's a finely divided the metallic platinum and that is deposited on these uh, platinum using electrochemical process. We'll explain the electrochemical process of electroplating. We'll, we'll soon explain that. So using the electroplating method uh, this uh, finely divided uh, platinum is deposited. Right? And we call, if you do, if you deposit layers of platinum on platinum metal itself, we call that platinization of platinum. We call that platinization of platinum. And why do you do that? See, it increases the surface area. 
for example if i have a plain platinum this is a plain platinum and the second is i have a platinum plain and on that you put lots of small 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 platinum so overall it becomes rough right so in that case the surface area increase you can imagine in this fashion you you see a plane a plane for example the cricket ground is a plane right you see the area of that and the same similar area if you go to any hill station let's suppose himalaya or any hill station if you calculate the total area surface area it will be more why because if you see i'll show you this is one surface this is one surface in this surface i have all these kind of metals right like this like this now if you see the total surface area of figure 1 will be more than figure 2 even if the ground is same why because when you cut these areas are also exposed right and that's how if you see the radiators which are used in the cars and air conditions they have this kind of area so that the maximum amount of heat can be dissipated so with this the surface area is increasing same similarly here if you take the normal platinum metal the surface area is less but if you put small small or uh, no do uh, the plating of like platinum uh, finely divided platinum here the surface area increase and here if you know the whole point is to have more surface area because the surface area is, is nothing but the platform where my electrochemical reaction will take place right so if you have more surface area you get better quality of catalytic action so as i have told they have the cross section area of a so for example this this one you are seeing right this has the area of a this also has the area of a right will have uh, this kind of structure here right something like this on one side and something like this on another side so these all will have area of a these two these two are point p and q exactly which i am showing you and they'll be separated by a distance l right so if you notice for a given conducting cell this is a conducting cell let me write here also so for a given conducting cell these values are constant because if it is designed in this fashion the area of this platinum electrode will be same and the distance between the two platinum electrodes will be same right so this l by a will be constant for a given cell right and i know resistance is nothing but rho l by a or 1 by k l by a. and this is constant right since this is constant for a given cell this is also called cell constant why because this is given constant for a given conducting cell right conducting cell this is a conducting cell and this is denoted by g star so instead of l by a when r is equal to rho instead of l by a, i can write g star this equation i can write 1 by k g star correct so for a given conducting cell this value is constant now the question is how can i derive the value so there are two ways one way i can directly find the value of length between these electrodes i can find the area of electrode i can easily find l by a, and that is nothing but my value of g star the other way i can do is i can measure the resistance of this whole cell with a solution whose conductivity is known for example if i take kcl or if i take nacl and nacl the conductivity of nacl or kcl is known at various concentration please note the conductivity here for electrolyte is dependent on depends on concentration right so for nacl or kcl any standard solution the conductivity is known the chemists have done this experiment and they they have the the, the values are pretty much there you can search on internet you can see in our textbook those values are known right so for at different concentrations so at different concentration this value is known sorry this uh, yeah this is already known this value is already known r is equal to rho and g star right g star is nothing but my cell constant so this value is known in the market for kcl let's suppose uh, 0.1 m solution again kcl 
one m solution and again kcl you take 0.01 m solution for all these these values is known this value is known so if i know this and this value i can actually know because the same setup which i have showed you right example in seed here you take k plus n cl minus n you put in the wheatstone bridge in the same structure and you pass the back uh, current and you just uh, this is a variable resistance again you just keep changing the resistance and at the point of time you see that there is no current passing through this circuit that means your wheat stench wheat stone bridge is all established and in that, that case you can say that r3 into r2 is equal to r4 into r1 so these three values you must be knowing r1 r3 and r4 so r2 you can actually calculate correct so these and you know, they also depend on constant temperature also these values are all known at all different temperature maybe you will take 290 kelvin the room temperature correct so with that you can actually get the value of r so you can do the same experiment three times you will get almost get the same get the same value of r you can take the mean value of r right so that is one way so if you if you know this if you know this actually this is something you can see experimentally using physics so you can get the value of this right what i'm trying to say is r is equal to resistivity into cell constant this is known to you right you'll get out of tables in the market in the textbook also for, for for example kcl and nsl at different concentration different temperature this value is given so let's suppose i took uh, 0.1 m kcl at 298 and that value is given it to be x that is something i can get this value r i can find from this experiment if i put 0.1 m kcl so this value is also i can derive using maths so this value is i can get because now the equation will be y is equal to x into g star so g star is nothing but y by x y is the experimental value we shall get x is the value we shall get in textbooks for a given concentration of kcl or nsl at a given temperature correct so please note once again the con conductivity depends on temperature and concentration we'll discuss more about this how the conductivity varies based on temperature and concentration in fact we discussed little bit about this uh, the moment you increase the temperature the conductivity of electrolyte solution increase but the conductivity of the metallic solution decrease we have decreased we have discussed this we'll discuss this more again correct so with this if you see with this if you see i can get g star is nothing but r by resistance by resistivity resistance i'll find experimentally resistivity i'll get it from the textbook correct so here the equation will use is r1 into r4 is equal to r2 into r2 and please note here ac power is used for the wheat stone bridge because we are saying that for this solution itself we will be using ac power not dc power this is the easy part actually okay now let's talk thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again